Eid al-Fit is an important religious holiday celebrated by Muslims worldwide that marks the end of Ramadan, the Islamic holy month of fasting. The holiday celebrates the conclusion of the approximate 30 days of dawn to sunset fasting during the entire holy month of worship, charity and acts of kindness. Let's share the colours and excitements and the joyous celebrating and feasting with fellow Muslims around the world in the true spirit of sharing, forgiveness and thanksgiving. The day of Eid falls on the first day of the month of Shawwal. The date for the start of any lunar Hijri month varies and would be based on the observation of the new moon by local religious authorities, so the exact day of celebration varies by locality. As the day ends in Seoul, the city is shrouded in the golden rays at dusk. It is near the end of the holy month and the nightly azan call has started at the central mosque of Seoul at Itaewon. Tonight, Imam Lee is sharing an exciting moment with fellow Muslim friends from Malaysia, where they await announcement from Malaysia to determine if the following day is Eid. The announcement comes after 9.30pm, stating that the authority at Kelantan State of Malaysia fails to see the new moon. It is decided that the next following day will be Eid instead. Myeongdong is one of the primary shopping districts in Seoul. Many brand name shops and department stores line the streets and alleys. Common products for sale include clothes, shoes and accessories. The department stores carry many premium labels and other fashionable goods. Here we find Miss Iman, who is on her last minute shopping to celebrate Eid the next day. I'm so excited because the Seoul Central Mosque has announced Eid as tomorrow, so it's officially the last day of Ramadan. And as a busy teacher working in Seoul, it's the only day I can go shopping for Eid tomorrow. So right now I'm in Myeongdong. It's the central hub. It combines makeup, clothing, food, cat cafes, dog cafes. There's basically everything. So I've come here to go shopping and I'm so excited. Hopefully I don't spend too much money. Let's go shopping. Miss Iman Mohammed is originally from Minnesota in the United States. She has developed a great interest in Korean culture since high school and finally decided to come here as an English teacher in 2015. Not only does Myeongdong offer a variety of shopping, but actually what most people don't know is that in the underground subway, there is actually more discounted shopping that you can do. So if you're looking to find some really good bargains and deals, I really recommend visiting the underground shopping. So I'm gonna go check out to see if they have some deals. As 
much as I'm excited for Eid tomorrow, I'm really sad that Ramadan has come to an end. It really went by so fast. But I think I've done enough shopping for tomorrow, and now I'm looking forward to my feast, my Eid feast tomorrow in Itaewon. Itaewon, as I said, offers a lot of variety of halal food, so I don't know what I'm going to eat, but I'm really excited. Another day breaks in Bangkok City, where the exciting mix of the old and the new keeps attracting a non-stop stream of tourists from all over the world. Renowned as the Venice of the East, the canals that crisscross Bangkok City are still retained as one of the most important modes of public transport since its early days. These canals are believed to be dug out by Muslim slaves from the South Patani Empire times. As the commuter boat navigates away from the city centre towards the east along the Sin Saad Canal, we arrive at the serene Ban Krua village, which has been established since the end of the 18th century by Muslim migrants from Cambodia and Vietnam. The distant weaving noise occasionally interrupts the serenity of the village, where the traditional craft of silk weaving is still being practiced by the original Muslim weaver families. Mr. Nifom Manutas is the proprietor of this humble factory called Pamai Ban Krua. On the eve of Eid al Fitr, Mr. Nifon is still busy serving customers on their last minute shopping trips. The Ban Krua community is best known for their silk weaving, which enjoyed international popularity during the 50s and 60s. Earlier success in the silk business has allowed most of the Muslim weavers here to move to plusher surroundings with a new middle-class lifestyle. Mr. Nifon is among the remaining 30% of Muslims still clinging on to the old lifestyle, where he rigorously maintains Ramadan traditions, accompanied by the relics from the olden days. As one of the world's cultural centers, London is the most populous city of England and the United Kingdom. It has a diverse range of people and cultures, and more than 300 languages are spoken in the region. At present, Islam is UK's largest minority religion, with a Muslim population of more than 3 million. Most of London's Muslims are descendants of immigrants from South Asia. There are also a large number of Muslims from Arab and African countries. London is also home to large Turkish and Bosnian Muslim communities. As the international hub of education, London has also attracted a great number of foreign students every year. Born and raised in Singapore, pianist Nabila Jalal has graduated in 2016 with honours from the Royal College of Music in London. She has been staying in London for four years. So I've got my circle of friends from college. So what we do is, um, basically we just practice together. We try to cheer each other on and um, take breaks together because um, as a pianist, sometimes it gets quite boring. You're just confined into that four walls of your rehearsal space. And so we'll probably like hang out um, outside college and just yeah, take a breather a bit before going back in and embarking on another two, three hours of practice probably. Yeah, and other than that, um, outside school I hang out with the other Singaporeans as well. Um, we go out for meals, well that's what Singaporeans do anyway, they just eat. Uh, and I think it's really great that I have very good...